Now, uh, the next four signs show the results of salvation. The first three is how you get saved. It's by faith. It's miraculous. It's by grace. The last four, the feeding of the 5,000 in chapter 6, salvation brings satisfaction. Jesus is the bread of life. I mean, all those people were so hungry, he fed them so much that the disciples had to pick up 12 basketfuls. I mean, everybody gorged themselves, and there was 12 big baskets left. That means that Jesus completely satisfies. See, one of the evidences of salvation is that endless restlessness that characterizes unsaved people goes away. And and replacing it is perfect peace. It says in Isaiah that the wicked are like the restless sea, foaming up their own shame. They're just endlessly pursuing something else, and they're restlessly looking for it. But the work of righteousness, Isaiah says, is peace. And the effects of righteousness are quietness and assurance forever. That's the salvation God brings. And that's the the first result of salvation. The second one is also in chapter 6, when Jesus calmed the storm. You remember that, 16 through 21 of chapter 6. Disciples are in the boat. Jesus is on the water. They're sinking, and Peter walks out to Jesus, and Jesus comes into the boat, and the, and the storm stops. You know what they all wanted? Get out of the boat. We don't want you in here. Scared them to death, because Whoever had seen someone that could walk on water, talk to the wind, and make water calm? I mean, it, it overwhelmed them. But what Jesus was showing them was, that he's the Lord of everything. No disease, no storm, no demon, no problem, not even death stands in his way. And what he talks about there is salvation brings peace. Jesus is Lord of everything. And then let, let's get to our chapter, because that's where we're supposed to be this morning. Uh, in the elder prayer, someone prayed and he says, help the pastor not to get distracted. Well, there's just so much here, it's hard not to get distracted. It's like going into the store to buy one thing. When you're hungry, everything looks good, right? And so, uh, but chapter 9 is where we want to be. This is the healing of the blind man. And what it says in the first seven verses is salvation brings light. Now, the story is this guy was blind from birth. What a perfect picture of how all of us came into this world. We were all born blind to God. Boy, we can see everything else. We can see every sin and everything else we want, but we can't see him. And and so this picture is salvation brings light and spiritual sight. And then, by the way, if you're counting, that was the sixth one. The seventh one is raising Lazarus from the dead, and, and what salvation brings to us is life. We live, it says in the book of Hebrews, after the power of an endless life. Uh, another witnessing time I'll never forget is when Bonnie and I were sitting, eating dinner. We ate dinner for two hours once. We were backpacking in Europe, and we would spend all of our money um, on meals because we slept on the trains. And, um, and we found this little place, and we ate for two hours, and we sat and talked. And we were reading the Bible and everything, and finally someone came from a nearby table and stood at our table and said, can we sit with you? And we said, sure, why? And they said, because we've watched you eat for two hours, and you have a level of tranquility we have looked for our whole life. I said, well, sit down. Who are you? And she said, my name is Manisa Riza Shah Pahlavi. I said, great, who's that? She says, my, my father is the Shah of Iran. I said, whoa, you've had a lot of places to look for peace and tranquility and haven't found it, eh? She said, no. And we shared the simple gospel that Jesus brings life and light and peace and satisfaction. Okay, these seven signs, all of them point from the miracle to the Savior Who's the one that saves and what salvation does? And by the way, each one of these signs uh, points to Christ in his work in believers. Now, just for those of you that like to study, in, in each of these signs, after Jesus performs the miracle, he usually preaches a sermon about what he just did. In chapter 5, when he healed that man that was laying there for 38 years, he says, you think that's great? He says, when I talk, people in the grave can hear my voice. And if you hear my voice in the grave and you've died in your sins, you're going to go to judgment. If you hear my voice in the grave and you have trusted in me, I will give you endless life. And all of a sudden, the people went, whoa. He is the one who's the judge of all things. Chapter 6, when he fed everybody, he got done feeding them. They were very happy sitting there in little groupings on the ground. And Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. The food you ate is going to go away. If you eat from me, you'll never hunger. You'll never, ever be empty again. 
You know what it says at the end of chapter 6 after that big sermon he gave? It says most of the people stopped following him. They said, his salvation is too hard, we don't want it. That troubles me because nowadays people try and present a salvation that offends no one. You know, I was a trained evangelist. I've gone to evangelism school. I know how to give invitations. You want an invitation? I know how to give an invitation. I was trained for months how to give an invitation. I know how to make everybody come forward. You sing long enough and say enough stuff and talk and you can, you can, and you, you have a few people stand in the back and at, at propitious times they start walking forward. It kind of gets people to go forward. That's not the salvation God talks about. When Jesus presented salvation, most people walked out. They didn't like it. Why? Because he told them the truth. He didn't emotionally lure them into something that they make a momentary decision that the birds peck away and they live like the devil the rest of their life thinking they got saved. He front-loaded the gospel and says, you believe on me. When he told that eager, rich, young ruler about salvation, that guy ran to him and said, I want to be saved. Jesus says, great, come on. Uh, leave everything behind and follow me. The guy said, are you kidding? I'm not going to leave all my stuff behind. I just want to add you to my life. I don't want to change my life. Jesus said, okay, you can go. He didn't say, okay, I'll change it for you. See, we have a different view of salvation many times than Christ did. Well, basically, these signs point to Christ. And what Jesus said is, there are two types of people alive today. He says that there are those who are spiritually blind and those who are spiritually seeing. So according to Jesus, you can divide the whole world and everybody you know into one of two groups. Those who are in the darkness, spiritually blind, that's how they were born, and those who at some point since their birth have had a miraculous transformation, an eye transplant, which the Bible calls a heart transplant, which means suddenly we can spiritually begin to see. So there's only two kinds of people. There aren't half, I mean, you would think that there's some people that have, you know, they have one good eye and one bad eye. No, the Lord does not do that. Either you see or you don't. That's the mighty miracle of salvation. And these seven signs Jesus gives in John's gospel are all about salvation and having life in Christ. And, and in our passage, Jesus describes the process, and it's, it's really beautiful. 